Okay, our mic's on, mic is on. Wasn't quite ready to start the video. This is how things keep happening, but animals do things. And then I go, well, I need to get this on camera. Never say tortoises aren't smart. This is Colby. Colby's a sulcata tortoise who has a very large water bowl. Just around, it's over there. It's in the bar area. Another water bowl back there, which obviously he can't get to right now. And instead of walking, around into the bar area to go to his water bowl that he usually uses, he somehow managed to tip over this water bowl. It's giant, I don't, how did he even do this? He tipped it over and he's been drinking out of the corner. That's some intelligence right there. That's, I have a problem. I'm gonna find a solution and see what I can do. And he, he definitely did it. Is that what you've been freaking out about? I've been running around back and forth over here. I've been still working on polishing the glass on that fish tank that needs to get put back together and heard a noise, came over here and Colby's just, Chugging away. <sighs> hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's 22 degrees outside. We're not doing anything outdoors in this video. What I have to focus on this week is cleaning, getting the house ready for a late Thanksgiving. So didn't do it when everybody else did. Have family coming in town in a couple of days. Still have things that need to be put away from all the construction that's been going on. The table's still a mess of things that need to be organized into the new china cabinet. Boxes and cabinets, just things that need to be fixed. Office is still nowhere even close to being done, but progress is happening from what I'm being told at the contractor's shop. I don't know. Fun, exciting things have been happening upstairs. Not gonna show an up close of that until the final reveal, which I'm sure will still be months away. It's gonna be a while till we get there. Get an update. She's good. She and Pumpkin, they're hanging out more. Not quite. Pumpkin isn't fully relaxed with her, but they're pretty good. They can be near each other. As long as the kitten doesn't touch Pumpkin, everything's okay. Pumpkin can touch the kitten. She reaches out to touch the kitten and she'll like sniff her and chase her around the house. But the other way around, and no, not a lot. Pumpkin, you gonna say hi? You don't wanna say, you gotta go? You're going somewhere? Of course she is, she's always going somewhere. These lights stopped working yesterday. Why, why, why? People can't make things that just last a long time. Those LED lights for the coral, for the reef tanks, not cheap, not cheap at all. All right, bud, you done? Had your drink, think you're good. There's plenty to do out in the grow space. Let's go out there and do some stuff with some plants. There we go, that's what I like to see, just kitties being cats. Hanging out together while well, they were. I'm sorry, Pumpkin, you know, ruin the moment. You got a glimpse of it. They're getting a lot better together. I do think Pumpkin really does, I know I said we were gonna go out to the grow space, we will. Yella didn't get the kitten time yet. <laughs> you doing, weirdo? That's an air tag, by the way, the uh, thing on her collar because she likes to disappear. She hides a lot. She's a good hider. Usually in the Christmas tree or underneath a piece of furniture. It, they're just, they're hanging out together a lot. I think Pumpkin is enjoying her. Seems to really enjoy just hanging out, watching the kitten and being in the same vicinity as Kitten. I, her name, by the way, is Poppy. I never call her that. I always call her Kitten or Little Stinky. Sometimes Danger Floof because she can be psychotic sometimes. I think it's going well. Pumpkin's warming up. Pumpkin's always liked other cats. She's not a very snuggly cat. That doesn't mean she doesn't enjoy other cats. She likes to play a lot. They're like mock playing right now. The kind of play where Pumpkin will just sort of paw at her a little bit and see what happens. And then if the kitten responds and Pumpkin hisses at her and runs away. But you can tell that the initial paw that she puts out there is one that's meant to be playful. At least that's how it seems. It seems to be playful. Can't say for sure. Okay, gross pace. Let's go do some things. Why would I have all the ways to... Okay, that's better. Does y'all's Instagram just recommend the most random things that you do not need? Especially the eBay ads. I'll be scrolling occasionally. I don't really actually use Instagram all that much. I try and post stuff to my stories a couple times a week, but I'm not good at like scrolling through and seeing things. Generally just whatever's there on my homepage. I typically just like the first couple things and move on. But there's always an ad from eBay or somebody and today's suggestion was this. A giant silver inflatable cube. And it's only, what was this, like $730? Yeah, $730, free shipping. That, that makes it worth it. And what I'm really curious about is why would they recommend that to me when they could have recommended this? Look at that. That's beautiful. I would much rather have a translucent cube with lots of fun lighting on it. I don't need, none of this matters. I don't need a cube. So the, anyway, stuff that I need to do out here, I need to cut back a ginger. I'd say that curcuma is ready to go to bed. It's ready to rest for the winter time. And then I think there are maybe a couple of repots that I need to do. I'm gonna have to dig around the, not a, I know, I know that there are lots of repots that need to be done, but ones that I actually have the materials and pots for right now, that's a different story. I clean up my schlumbagera too. 
you can't, it's, it's over there. You can't see it. It's full of pine needles. Need to get those cleaned out of it. It's the first thing to do would be get y'all up on a tripod. Probably had enough of the camera swinging around this entire time I've been out here. Don't need to get anybody motion sick. Get everything adjusted. Maybe turn on another light. Yeah, that's nice. And able to see things makes a big difference, doesn't it? The curcumas. Typically, I let them die back some more than this. So what I'm probably going to do is just cut off some of the foliage that's more yellow up top, this crispy stuff. Specifically, these guys right here, which actually usually will just snap right off. Some of them are gonna stay on a little bit more taut and tight. And I don't like to just cut off everything. It's because the plants, it's taking all that in. Pulling whatever's left in these leaves back down into its corn. Oh, what my problem is, I'm tongue tied today. I've tried to say this like five times. It's pulling what it has left in here, whatever's green, that's where there's some nutrients, some minerals and things for it to store down in its root system to produce a stronger plant for next year. That's good enough. I'm sure you know what I mean. The flowers are done. They've faded out. I don't think there's any seeds. So if it's yellow, I'll cut it off. And what's left that's green, I'll just go ahead and leave for right now. It's not a huge improvement, but it's taking up less space, not having as much dead stuff hanging around. I don't stop watering on these until they've yellowed out completely. The difference is that when I do water them, it's just like this. It's just a little boop, 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 boop. That's it. It's just a little bit of water. I'm not trying to fully saturate things. I'm just trying to make sure that there's some moisture in there around what's left of the root ball as it's doing its thing and dying back. And once this has died back completely and I've cut it back all the way, then I take this and I normally store it someplace just cool, dark, and dry. And by that, I just mean I like toss it underneath one of these tables that the plants are on top of. So they do still end up getting some moisture from water that moves underneath the containers during the winter time. But again, they're not getting saturated with water. There have been winters like last winter where I just cut the plant back and I just set it down on the ground in the garage. Wasn't in any special spot. Sometimes it got hit with water when I'd be watering other plants and it was completely fine. So remember outdoors, there's gonna be some moisture outside, right? It's not always going to be dry all winter long. Well, not for everybody anyways. Like, there are some places with really bone dry winters, but that's not how this plant grows. They're not programmed to have to be bone dry all winter long, not unless things are nice and cool, but things are warm enough in here that if this gets a little bit of water occasionally, it's just fine. In fact, I think it's a lot better for the plant. If it didn't get any water, then I would have a much weaker, smaller looking plant come the springtime when this starts to reemerge. Not even the springtime. Out here in the growth space, these gingers usually start to take off again around late February, sometimes early March. They get going fairly early, which is great because then I end up with blooms on them in the beginning of summer instead of having to wait until mid to late summer, which is when these will typically bloom if you have them in the ground anyways. And that of course depends on where you live. You get that put back over there. I'm not ready to move it just yet. And uh, now I've made a bit of a mess. I should probably get this cleaned up. Don't have to make it perfect, but I'm still doing some messy things over here. Y'all remember the Schlumbergeras that aren't in focus? How about now, is that better? Yeah, you can see them. Probably try and remember that there are people who are new here. I picked these up last winter, got them potted up. They're just regular Schlumbergera truncatas, truncata, Thanksgiving cactus, holiday cactus, oftentimes called Christmas cactus, which these are not Christmas cactus, but you get it. We can go with it, that's fine. It is a different plant though. I've had these sitting in the dark to get them to start doing their thing and thrown out some buds. And they're still covered in pine needles from being outside while the pine trees were doing their thing and dropping pine needles all over the place. I'm gonna try and get the bulk of those out. I don't want too much of this hanging out down <laughs> in the center of the plants because you know, rot, don't want the plants to rot. Having some dry decomposing material on the inside isn't going to kill them. As long as there's good airflow around the plants, these are epiphytes after all. So that is part of their niche outdoors, right? Is to hang out on rocky outgrowths and in the nooks and tight spots on trees where they're getting filtered light and plenty of debris falls down around them and inside them and that decomposes. That acts as a fertilizer. So this one, I grabbed three of these. Actually, I believe Black Friday last year, they were like, I don't know, buck 50 a pop. So I grabbed three of them. It's just a yellowish orange gold flower on there, which is very washed out. Hopefully you can see it. It's a very pretty flower. It's lots of little buds starting to pop out on it. And then this one, this was, still is the variegated one. 
I had wanted one of these for a long time, so I was really excited when I got these. I believe that there were two. I could be wrong, there might have been three, but I'm pretty sure I just grabbed two of them from the nursery and potted them up in here together. You can see these are very, very thirsty. The spot where I had these hanging was a spot where I was having trouble getting water to them, so that's the other reason I wanted to get these cleaned up and uh, move them to a different dark spot that's easier to access with the hose because, well, these are all shriveled up. Well, regardless of <laughs> them being flaccid and thirsty, you can tell they did a good amount of growing since I potted them up, if you remember what they look like. I don't know if I'll be able to find the video to overlay, but I would say the variegated one is maybe doubled or tripled in size. And this one, probably about the same. Actually pretty surprised with the amount of growth that got out of these, because they tend to be a slower grower. I kept them right next to the bird bath the pot fountain thing, that blue pot on the patio where they were getting filtered light in the morning and shade in the afternoon and a good amount of just overspray from the fountain. And I think that they really, really enjoyed that. I try to think of a spot that would be as close to mimicking what they would be flourishing in in nature. And that seemed to do the trick. There's lots of debris to fall on top of them. They got hit with fertilizer on occasion. I try and keep the fertilizing on these to just a quarter strength. A fertilizer sprayer that I have, you can just dial it down to a quarter strength and then hit plants like the cactus, the ferns, the orchids ficus, plants that have a more weak root system. Weak, that's probably not the word I should use to describe it. Roots that are more prone to burn if they get too much fertilizer on them. These are plants that can have very strong roots, right? So you can anchor them to a cliffside half the time or into a, the nook of a tree. Same thing with ferns and orchids. But the ammonia in a lot of fertilizers can scorch them and cause some problems. So Quarter strength is all they ever got, and it was just kind of at random. I didn't have it on a schedule, anything like that. And they did very well. They don't look great right now. This is probably the worst that they've looked, which is typical, of course, when I'm trying to give an update. But y'all know how cactus are. Little drink of water, they'll plump right back up and be looking fine here. I mean, really, by the end of the day, they should look totally fine. Look at the variegation on this set of pads. That's beautiful. There is some growth on the inside here that doesn't have any variegation. I should probably prune that out if I'm trying to keep this pot just full of variegated ones. I'm not going to mess with any of that until the plant has rehydrated and it's nice and firm because it's very easy to overpluck or overpull and accidentally rip something that you didn't mean to when they're all weak like this. And the plants bruise more easily too. And really I should have waited to pull those pine needles out of there even until those had filled back out. But here we are, it's fine. They'll be okay. They look good. <laughs> They'll look better in a few hours, maybe a day. Don't worry, they're doing great. Just need to find a spot now where I can put them where it's still dark enough to induce the flowering on them, but still easy enough to access with the hose. The spot I had them hanging, I just couldn't hit them with the hose without overspraying and hitting lots of other things I didn't want to get wet. But you know what? Right underneath this table, that'd be perfect. I can still hit them with some water. There's a good amount of airflow over there because the heater is just a few feet over this way. That's gonna help move some air around. And it's dark enough. It doesn't, they don't need to be in like pitch black. That's not how that has to go to induce flowering. Heck, half the time with these, you don't even need to induce flowering if you have them near a window and they're getting the changes the way the sun moves around through the seasons as it is. But these are under artificial light in here, so I do have to make sure to tuck them someplace where it's going to be darker for a few weeks. There are plenty of buds on there. There should be more, but I think that that's probably all on me for not being good about the watering. So we can fix that. Heck, I've had flumbageras that bloomed off and on basically throughout the year before. Not a heavy bloom ever during the summertime, but they'll throw out random flowers here and there as the warmer season goes on too. These hyper hybridized commercial ones, they like to flower. It's a big part of why people grow them. They're generally pretty easy to keep going and keep flowering especially when you get to this time of year, moving into the winter time. It's been about 15 minutes. They're already looking better. I don't know if the camera really shows it all that well, but like this growth down here that was laying flat, it's already starting to pop back up. I love plants that can dry out and be really dramatic, but then you water them, they just magically spring back to life. It's not good. We shouldn't do that to the plants. I'm just saying, I, it's just, it's fun. It's an observation thing. It's fun to observe, not doing this intentionally. That's not what's going on here. Dramatic people on the internet are gonna try and cancel me now. It's torturing his plants for entertainment. Not the case at all. Okay, that'll do. Just for like three to four weeks, that should be totally fine. 
Now, I would like to get a cutting from my pothos. I potted up this spathophyllum, a sensation pathophyllum, pathophyllum, spath you know what I'm saying. Did that in the last video. It was in the back of my fish tank in the office, upstairs office, and I put that in there with a pharaoh's mask. And I should have, while I was at it, gone ahead and popped something back into that pot, because this little pot, it fits perfectly between the glass and the rim of the tank, holds itself in place very well. I should have gone ahead and grabbed something else, grabbed a cutting to put back there in its place, but I didn't, and I already know what I would like to use. I have these, they're Marble Queen Pothos. People call them Snow Queen when they have a lot of white in them, which is this one right here. Has tons and tons and tons of white in the variegation, a really, really nice variegation in this one. Here's a more typical marble over here. Really pretty, still has lots of white in it. In fact, it's getting more and more white the bigger that it gets, but this one right here, always flush with lots and lots of white growth. And I think that this would be a nice one to take a cutting from. In fact, I have a cutting of it over here somewhere and I set it down amongst everything else and I think it may have rerooted itself back into the pot. Or did I drop it? Is it down here somewhere? Did it fall into the abyss with the, oh, I forgot I have another Schlumberger over here. It's got some flowers on it. So here's one that's been getting more water. It's further away from the lights, has one flower on it. Haven't had this one sitting in the dark or anything. It's fairly dark compared to when it was outside. So that's just artificial lighting. So it's not going to do much for it. It has one flower on it. So I should probably move that someplace a little bit darker as well. I will try and remember to do that at another time. Where is that cutting? It was a cutting that I had sitting in the fountain outside and I just was letting it like root and grow. Here it is. Is this it? I don't think that that cutting was this big. It's not those. Those are actually rooted into the pot. What are, where are you coming from? Where's your origin? Oh, well, I had a specific cutting that I had taken from this over the summertime and I was just letting it sit in the top of that fountain outside and let it root and do its thing and love life, being outdoors with the water flowing around its roots. And I uh, took that cutting specifically because it was just a really gorgeous specific stem that had popped up out of there where the leaves were really, really intense. They were kind of like this one all the way through. And the intention there was to get that potted up and start it off as its own plant, but I don't, I don't know where, where to go. Seemed to have misplaced it. I brought it inside for reasons that I could do this. What the heck is this thing? Oh, that's just, it's just a stick that was sitting there. Oh, I need to cut that off. This is the Colocasia Waikiki. It's just an offshoot from a larger one that I stuck in the ground. I put it in a self-watering container, which is, some, it's bone dry. Just watered a few days ago. I must not have hit that very well. Oh, it's because I flooded the table instead of watering the table and the self-watering containers, they're not going to get water when I flood. Flood meaning I fill them from below and let them wick the water up. So that's okay. Gonna have to remember that. That's gonna be a thing this year. I have a lot of self-watering containers out here. They don't have holes in the bottom, right? Because how would that work? There needs to be a reservoir full of water for them to do their thing. So flooding the tables that have a lot of self-watering containers on them, that's not going to work. I have to remember to water from above. I'm gonna keep looking. I need both hands and the tripod doesn't fit over here because we're just I'm surrounded by plants. There are plants everywhere. If I can't find it, just take another one. I'll find another nice cutting to pot up and put in the back of the tank. Well, couldn't find it, but I think I got something that'll work. I was thinking instead of potting this up with soil, I should probably use Leka, just the clay pebbles. I don't want to put the potting soil in the tank. I know that that's the whole thing that the style of aquascaping people do. I don't want to introduce a ton of nutrients out of nowhere into the tank. That's a whole entire like ecosystem you end up setting up in your tank that you develop over time. I don't want to just put a pot in there that has the miracle Grow organic soil in there. So that's going to cause a spike in nutrients. I don't want to deal with all that. And the LECA works totally fine. The clay pebbles, I could have done that with the Spathophyllum from Wednesday's video, by the way. I should have mentioned that in the video. Hopefully I will put some text up on that screen. Leka works great. Don't have to use soil. I don't know if I have any Leka out here. I might have some lava rock. That'll work. It'll do the same thing. Okay, all right. Sitting right next to me, leftover aquarium gravel and sand from the tank that used to be out here. There's a planted aquarium. That's a planted aquarium gravel. There's some sand mixed in there. I've been using it in a lot of the mixes that I've been making 
you've seen in several videos where I've been adding gravel and sand. It's been this stuff. It's a fine pumicey mix that's actually made to go in a fish tank. I like using something really porous with a pothos cutting or anything where they need to root from the node because it's just so much easier because you can bury them. You can go too heavy with it. You can go up higher. There's still plenty of airflow around everything with a more chunky material. End up with, all right, okay, didn't bury it far enough. For the sake of stability, you can put them down lower and you can pile up the leka or lava, pumice, whatever it is you're using higher and that will help hold the plant in place. If you're using a soil, you really shouldn't do that because you're cutting off a lot of oxygen to the surrounding of the plant, right? And then you end up with issues with rot. That was too low, I'm bringing it up higher. It's fine, if it pops loose, not a big deal. As long as those nodes are in contact with this gravel, which will wick some moisture up very slowly, but it will do the job. You get down in there and stay there. Just stay in place, okay? And there it is. This was the nicest cutting I could find. I remember the reason that I really liked that other cutting was one, the really intense white on it that I had talked about, but it had a tricolor variegation. There was a dark green and a very light chartreuse, almost lime green, in addition to the white, which I hadn't seen before on one of these Snow Queen, Marble Queen, highly variegated pothos, uh, unless it's like a Mandula. I've seen it on those before. Mandula, Mandula, I don't, I just, I've never looked into how you're supposed to say that. You can tell me down in the comments and maybe I'll try and remember what you say I should say. And this leaf back here is from, I believe the same stem that I had taken that cutting from and it has some of that tricolor in there. Not much, but you can kind of see it in here. I'm sure the cutting will show up sometime in the next few months. It'll probably just end up like growing out from underneath something. It'll grow up the side of the wall. It, it's around here somewhere. There's just, there's so many plants that sometimes lose track of them. So that's nice. Have a pothos to grow up the back of the tank. One thing I will say, I talked in that video, the last video where I was potting up the spathophyllum and I said, pothos, they're great plants for nutrient uptake, for keeping your tanks clean. They love growing in the back of a fish tank. That is true. In a planted aquarium though, sometimes they can end up getting so big that they end up taking away from a lot of the nutrients that the other plants might need. Probably only something that you need to keep in mind with a smaller fish tank, one that's very lightly stocked or doesn't have any type of growing media in the bottom, whether you're using a mud or a substrate made for planted aquariums. It's just something to watch out for. If you have a pothos that's flourishing, but the rest of your plants aren't, you might just need to cut that pothos way back from the roots and from the foliage or just pull it out and start over with the smaller one. This little guy, it's not gonna do anything to the tank, not for a long time, but several months until that gets big enough where it's gonna be pulling so much out from the water that's gonna take away from the aquatic plants being able to get the nutrients that they need. <sighs> this for Leka, it would not be moving around like this. It's just this particular pumice mix is very, very, very lightweight and not the best for stability. Once that wicks up some moisture, it will hold itself in place much better. And once it's hanging up in the back of the tank, it's not gonna get moved at all. It'll put out roots within just a couple of weeks and it'll start to stabilize on its own. I just need to stop touching it. I have to remember that I need to stop messing with the thing or it's just gonna keep falling over. It's a nice looking cutting, isn't it? It has some scorch on it. That's actually one of the other reasons I picked it was because it was one of the uh, stems that was closer to the light. There was one that uh, but until a couple days ago was growing up the little plastic piece, the hanger, and uh, it was starting to scorch. And that ring light that I have for the plant is pretty intense. So I wanna make sure that it's one that's already fairly well acclimated to that kind of light. I could come in here and cut off this leaf that has the hole in it and that burnt up crusty one right there. I guess it, actually it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to cut out a couple of leaves just to make sure that the plant's not using too much energy, trying to keep its foliage alive and the foliage that it has, it's using to uh, put out new roots and not trying to keep, you get it. Don't want too much going on with your cuttings. I didn't show up before I started. There were, I think, four or five nodes on that stem. There's plenty going on down there to keep the plant acred down so it won't be moving around much or hopefully at all. Hopefully it won't move around at all. I was about to go inside so I can put that cutting in the tank. And I remembered that I should give this Colocasia some water while I'm out here and remembering that it's thirsty. A few of these plants are pretty thirsty. Just need to go ahead and water again. I've been keeping the humidity lower in here than I do most years, and that alone is making it so I'm having to water a lot more 
than normal. It's only because the humidifier's broken, or not broken, it needs to be cleaned. You have to clean the little discs out on them and I can't find the cleaner. So I just need to do that. If the humidity is like 55, 60%, that's fine for the majority of what's in here. But compared to last winter where it was like 70 something percent, I do have to water a lot more frequently with just that slight downgrade. Look at this Columbia, beautiful foliage. It's supposed to be that color. It's supposed to look kind of like it's starting to desiccate. Lots of different shades of green, heavy veining, getting ready to open up another leaf. That's been a fun one to grow. I wanted to show the Pink Glory because it's been doing really well too and surprisingly dry. So that's okay, good to know. No, no, it's not dry, it's just lightweight. It feels moist enough in there to me, at least for a philodendron. Look at the Pink Glory. Isn't it beautiful? This is a really good grower. It's been throwing up leaves constantly, and I think I already need to bump this into a new container, and I just put this in here in, what was it, late August or September, I believe, when I had this outdoors. Whenever that Equigenera haul was, I think that was around mid-August. That's not that long ago, and it's been growing. Isn't all that surprising with a Gloriosum cross with a Linamii, the beautiful reddish pink on the inside where it's starting to put out some new growth. It's been great. That plant is a trooper, which I know that's to be expected with all the Gloriosums. The Gloriosums just tend to be nice, sturdy, fun ones. Everything else up here is just kind of like, meh, it's doing all right. This silver, whatever it was called, crystallinum, it has really spread itself out. So I need it to stand itself up. I think it must be getting too much shade during the summer because it's all splayed out. I need it to go up a little bit more. It'll get better light that way. I have another grow light just came in the mail so I can get that hung up here and that's going to help get them stretched up more straight. Hopefully it won't cook them. I don't think it will, but I don't really know because you can see the VGI. It's a couple feet away from that light and it started to cook, which could just be a transition thing. I didn't transition them. You know, I just brought them in here and plopped them on the shelves. I don't have time to be moving them around and adjusting the height of the lights and all that stuff. If you're gonna be in my growth space, you gotta be a trooper. Oh, that is not going to show on camera, but it looks pretty interesting. And that VJ has thrown out a new leaf that looks pretty good since I brought it in here, so I'm not worried about the scorch. Everything else has been doing really well. The Regale right here, it's temperamental, <laughs> which is no surprise, but putting up new leaves has some index, index, insect damage from the summertime where there were some, I think, caterpillars chewing on it. That's the only thing I ever saw over there. And then what was the other one? I, apparently we're doing an aeroid update now. Begonia's looking good. Lots of flowers on that one. The, oh yeah, this one right here, the silver, I wanna say blush, but the tag says bush. I don't know why they would call it silver bush. When I Google silver bush, the results say, did you mean silver blush? It's an anthurium, very pretty. Been a strong grower, a very, very, very strong grower. And then the, oh, the luxuriance. Do you want to see the luxuriance? Okay, um, there it is. You see it? It's about as close as I can get to it. It died back all the way pretty much immediately after I repotted it and did nothing all summer long. And then I brought it in here and it felt a little too moist, just kind of wet. So I put it on the shelf here because it's got that nice dry warm air from the heater right there to blow down on it. And I did that thinking, okay, well this is either going to kill it or dry it off. Then within days it was like, oh, okay, I'll grow. It just wanted apparently hot bone dry air to blast on it for hours at a time. And that's what got it going. I don't like why that doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up with how the plant's supposed to grow. But hey, whatever works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not moving it. It's gonna stay over there for now. Beautiful, but very temperamental anthurium for me so far. I think that that's just about everything that I needed to do in here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this upstairs, get put to the back of the fish tank. And I don't know if something else comes up then we can do it. If not, then this was fun. It was nice. It's taken, you don't want to focus, huh? Right when this turned off, I swear, just like one minute ago. Took an hour or so, but eventually that gravel soaked up the water right from the fish tank. This should take root in no time. Can't wait to see what this looks like when it starts to spread over the side of the tank. I'm not going to let it go 
too crazy because this isn't really the most appropriate setup for the plant for longevity, right? Just want to get it rooted. Get some size on it, bump it up to a larger container to do something with outdoors. More than likely, you tearing things up. I hear your little claws on the furniture. Get that, you better behave yourself. Dinks is so full of it tonight. You be careful with that tree. She sits right here. I know it's hard to see it's dark in this room. He keeps just like betting at this one ornament. Made sure to hang shatterproof ornaments where the kitten can reach ornaments that I got off topic, so sorry. To mention that, Saga Moss, great addition if you're using something that's maybe not wicking moisture well enough. Really, the Leica beads when you're doing the stuff that hangs inside of an aquarium, that's a good way to go. Just a little clay pebbles, great stuff, works fine. They even make little baskets that you can buy to fit into your fish tank that hang over the back or suction cup that you can put the plants in. Those work wonderfully this just happens to be a pretty good fit so i'm just I'm sticking with that for now enough for getting the plants <laughs> rooted y'all are just nuts tonight i think that'll do it did a lot to that's what that noise was it was a kitten that had run underneath the love seat to get into the why are you doing that <laughs> black friday cyber monday stuff Got a head start on my Christmas shopping. Bags hanging around, things I already need to start wrapping. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? If you're still gardening, weather's gotten pretty pleasant here. I was gonna pan over to the window, but there's nothing to see there because it's dark out. It's cold, now it's pleasant. I think we still probably have a couple weeks of decent weather left outdoors. Got some bulbs to plant, some shrubs coming in the mail, some Black Friday plants. Uh, yeah, things are good. Life is good, hope the same for you. <laughs> and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.